let's put that point directly to the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, who joins us on Good Morning Britain. The words of that doctor, Dominic Raab, Putin is Hitler. They need help. And right now it's Ukraine. But next it could be the rest of the world. What's your response? Look, uh, Putin is engaged in a catastrophic decision to invade Ukraine, catastrophic for Ukraine, European security, but also for the people of Russia. And we will take every measure we can to uh, make it uh, a failure. Uh, that's why we've not just supported the Ukrainians with the anti-tank weapons, with the training of 20,000, over 20, 22,000, I think, um, uh, troops, uh, but also uh, starving the Putin's war machine with the sanctions, the unprecedented sanctions regime. And you can see the impact that that has started to have. Record falls in the Russian ruble against the dollar. Um, the stock market record falls. And, of course, the bank of... The, the Russian central bank has had to double interest rates to 20%, all of which will help starve the, the, the Putin's war machine. But this is going to be a long haul. We will need to have strategic patience. And I suspect what we are now seeing is Putin trying, uh, at, with ever more heavy-handed tactics, to wrest back control of this uh, reckless war he's, he's started. When you say every measure, we're all very aware that Putin put his nuclear deterrent on high alert and the Russian government blamed the foreign secretary, Liz Truss, and aggressive words. So what do you mean by every measure? Well, in relation to that, I don't think we should feed or give succour to Putin's propaganda arm. Um, and most of that was rhetoric. What we should be focused on is what we can do to strengthen the will and the capacity of the Ukrainians who have shown incredible courage uh, uh, and stoicism uh, at this initial phase of the war. Um, and the sanctions in the way that I described have, uh, are, are helping with that. Uh, and, uh, uh, but also play the important, the critical element of helping to starve Putin's war machine and showing Russians, I mean, there'll be young Russian conscripts making their way uh, across uh, cold Ukrainian territory who were promised, who were told by Putin that this would be a cakewalk, that the Ukrainians would welcome them, that they're on a peacekeeping mission. And I think all of this helped sap the morale of Russian forces. But we should expect this to be a long, protracted crisis. But meanwhile, uh, we see a 40-mile uh, convoy inching its way towards Kiev. Um, we've seen attacks on a rehabilitation centre. We have seen an attack on a maternity hospital, on civilian targets. Uh, allegations that a thermobaric weapon has been used within Ukraine and cluster bombs as well. Are you ruling out military, direct military action against Russia while the conflict remains within Ukraine? I've been a war crimes lawyer before I became a politician, but though, and I've seen a lot of appalling footage, but, but, it, but, it, but it, it, it never is diluted in my mind, in my heart. It is, and what we're seeing is very harrowing indeed. And I think we need to brace ourselves for worse. We've set out our position that we're not going to engage directly um, uh, in militarily with Russia. That would feed the Russian narrative that uh, Ukraine is not a, a NATO member and therefore the, 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 the NATO alliance procedures uh, don't apply in the same way, but we will do everything short of that. Uh, and we have already supplied the anti-tank missiles, the training of under op Operation Orbital. Uh, and what we can, what I can also say to you is Liz Truss is going to be working, she's in the talking to the UN today about the mechanisms to preserve evidence of any potential war crimes. And the International Criminal Court prosecutor has said that he's looking very carefully at the situation in Ukraine. Um, and we will, the UK will, uh, will, will support the practical means uh, those institutions are independent, but the practical means for holding to people to account uh, who commit any war crimes. And this needs and this will affect the calculus, uh, not just of Putin, but of those commanders below him who are faced with potentially illegal orders. They will, in the back of their minds, now know, and this is the message that needs to go out, that they could end up in the dock of a court and they could end up behind prison bars if they engage in anything which amounts to a war crime. Okay. Mr. Rowe, let me ask you, we're seeing pictures, um, this morning we saw pictures of people at the Polish border, Poland letting in hundreds of thousands at Mold Moldova, same pictures. The EU has said that Ukrainians can arrive without having to apply for asylum and can be there for a minimum of three years. 
Yet here in the UK, Pretty Patel and the Home Office have said that we will allow people to come here, but only if they are immediate family members of Ukrainians already here in the UK. Why are we being so restrictive, do you think? Well, I don't think it is that restrict restrictive. It is a bespoke mechanism the Home Secretary's announced. It would allow up to 100,000 Ukrainians to come here. But yes, we're focused on those who are the dependents of either British nationals or Ukrainians living here. Uh, we also know, and it's true in refugee situations around the world, that many of those fleeing Ukraine uh, I, would want to stay in the country, but if not, go to a country closer to them in Central and Eastern Europe. And we'll work with our partners, but also with the UN, to facilitate that. Um, uh, and I think the Home Secretary is responded swiftly in a most agile way we can to provide the swiftest uh, uh, opportunity to support those fleeing. Uh, and we'll, we'll, of course, it is a team effort. We'll work with our what? international partners, but also with the UN agencies on this. She, she, she describes immediate family. That's the, that, that's the what, what do we, what is immediate family? Who, who does that mean? Does that mean mothers, fathers? What, what, how do you define immediate family? Well, it will cover dependents, but let, let the Home Secretary set so out... So not parents, so dependents or not. So if, if you're here and your mother, let's say, is in Ukraine, can, you, can your mother come and join you? Well, let the, the Home Secretary has announced the principle. She'll set out the full detail of that so we can uh, so we properly... So we don't know assess. the detail of that. You've just said that we're doing lots, but you don't know what the detail is. Are we doing something or are we not? If, if I'm a son here and my mother is in Ukraine on her own, worried about cluster bombs, worried about thermo weapons and I'm here and I'm paying my taxes and I've got a job and I look to the government for help and support, can I ask my mother to come and join me in London, in Birmingham, in Manchester? Well, I, uh, well forgive me, but I can't answer the individual factual cases well, no, of... I'm not asking... Uh, no, it's a made-up... It's a hypothetical case, but I'm talking about the son and mother relationship. You know that. Everyone else knows, at home knows what I'm asking. Does her mother count... As immediate, As immediate family. Uh, 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 the, the, the principle is that dependents will be able to come here, and, th and that's, so of course, mother, a fact. So a mother doesn't. So, so therefore, we, a mother... I mean, imagine if it was your mother, Dominic Raab. If your mother was in Ukraine right now, would you not want your mother to be repatriated, be back here with you? Well, you're doing the usual thing, which we always get on GMB, which is not allowing me to answer the question. The Home because Secretary... Get, because said, we get the usual thing from you when you don't answer the question the first well, time but around. I'm trying, but I'm trying to, but if you interrupt me within seconds, then I don't get an opportunity, nor do your viewers, to hear the answer and judge for themselves. OK. Am well, I allowed to proceed? Yes. OK, so the principles that Home Secretary has set out are that dependents up, and, and we're talking about up to 100,000, the, the precise criteria, the processes, she's going to be setting out in the, the days ahead. So all of those answers, and, and, I, and, I, and that will be provided, and I get why you're asking the question. I just can't answer every factual case, and I can't also speculate on the individual cases. Oh. But up to 100,000. So the point is, as we showed in Hong Kong, as we showed in Afghanistan, the UK will step up. We have a big-hearted tradition in this country, and we will do our bit. And the full details, which you're rightly asking for, will be set out shortly. I, I thought one of the reasons we came out of the EU, Mr Raab, is that we would have more control, that we could make quick, clear decisions. The EU have made a decision within hours. They have decided across all of the EU states that they will allow people into the European Union with no asylum application required for up to three years. We have got our own... We're supposed to be in control, yet we can't appear to make a decision. What was the point? We, we can make a decision, and you you'll only have to wait. We haven't. We're still waiting for detail. We can make a decision. We have made a decision. The full detail of it will be set out. The one point I would also make, though, is that I think that, that uh, the EU has reflected the reality of those Central and Eastern European countries who are so close uh, to Ukraine, and the fact that the flow of uh, refugees will inevitably be um, uh, end up going in that direction because many of those will want to stay as close to home as possible with the view to going back to Ukraine as soon as possible afterwards. Can I ask you a question about Ukraine? We all, we all worry about the future of Ukraine at the moment and where they stand in Europe. And President Zelensky has applied to be a member state of the European Union. Do you think that is a good idea? Well, that's ultimately a question for the EU and uh, Ukraine to decide. But I think the one thing that I would say is if Putin thinks that uh, by launching an illegal war, 
uh, with all of the catastrophic consequences, he is going to split and hive off and create satellite states around him. The inevitable consequence is that his neighbours are going to look to uh, the transatlantic allies and the European and American and for, for more comfort. We're already seeing that amongst NATO members, which is why uh, both land, air and uh, uh, um, uh, maritime, we have strengthened the support we're providing within that NATO umbrella. So the the, the tragedy for Russia and uh, and and the, the the miscalculation for Putin is that this will only steal uh, the resolve of NATO, the EU, the transatlantic alliance uh, to make sure that we protect uh, that border. Uh, and I think that's the inevitable consequence. Okay, Dominic Rob, we appreciate your time. Thank you for for joining us this morning on Good Morning Britain.